Eating healthy can be a challenge because there are so many things to consider. Deciding what to eat and how much to eat can sound simple, but it can get very complex. The first thing you need to know is that a standard plate size is 9 inches. So if you're building a meal on a larger size plate, you're most likely getting more servings. Here are examples of different plate sizes found on campus. Before building a good plate, it's important to know how much to put on your plate to ensure proper serving sizes. Serving sizes are important because they help with weight control and getting the correct amount of nutrients. Foods are broken down into five main categories, grains, proteins, fruits, vegetables, and dairy. Let's start with grains. Grains are measured in ounces. Try to make at least half of the grains you eat each day whole grains. Here are some examples of what counts as an ounce of grains. One slice of bread, a half a cup of cooked rice, pasta, or cereal, a six inch tortilla or corn taco, and one cup of dry cereal. Protein. Protein is measured in ounces, but on a food label you will see protein listed in grams. Most people need five to seven ounces of protein a day. Choose vegetarian sources of protein as well as lean and low fat meat sources. Here are several two and a half to three ounce protein equivalents. Chicken breast, carved meat, and two sliders. As you can see, a three ounce piece of meat is similar to the size of a deck of cards. Here are several one ounce equivalents of protein. One egg, a half ounce of nuts, a quarter cup of beans, and one tablespoon of peanut butter. Instead of using measuring spoons, it's much more practical to know that two tablespoons of foods, like hummus or peanut butter, look like the size of a golf ball. Fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables are both measured in cups, and most adults need about five to six cup equivalents a day. A lot of people eat fruit in the morning or as a snack and vegetables later in the day. It doesn't matter when you're eating them, as long as at the end of the day you've reached your fruit and vegetable goal. Try to eat a variety of colors each day. Here are several examples of a one cup equivalent of fruit. One cup of juice, a banana, an apple, and cut fruit or whole berries. A tennis ball is about the size of a one cup serving of a piece of fruit like an apple or an orange. If you drink juice, select 100% juice that is low in sugar. Dried fruit is double the equivalent of regular fruit, so a quarter cup of dried fruit counts as a one half cup serving. Try adding fruit to your breakfast cereal, yogurts, salads, or homemade smoothies. Here are several examples of a one cup equivalent of vegetables. One cup of baby carrots, one cup of beans, a sweet potato, two cups of raw leafy greens. Creative ways to add vegetables to your meals include adding them to sandwiches, pastas, or stir fries. Dairy. Dairy is measured in cups. Most people need three servings of low fat dairy each day. Here are several examples of a serving or cup equivalent of dairy. One cup of milk, one cup of yogurt, two slices of processed cheese, and a third cup of shredded cheese. Oils and empty calories. Our bodies also need essential nutrients that come from healthy oils. These are found in things like olive oil, nuts, fish like salmon, peanut butter, and avocados. Most people only need about six to eight teaspoons of healthy oils a day. Here are some examples of foods that contain healthy oils and their teaspoon equivalents. One tablespoon of peanut butter has a two teaspoon oil equivalent. A quarter cup of guacamole has a one and a half teaspoon oil equivalent. One ounce of peanuts has a three teaspoon oil equivalent. Other oils count as empty calories. Empty calories are also found in foods with a lot of added fat and or sugar. These foods provide a lot of calories with little to no nutritional value. Foods like cakes, salad dressings, mayonnaise, cookies, sodas, energy drinks, fast food, and alcohol count as empty calories. 
These should be consumed once in a while rather than every day. If you're looking for a quick grab-and-go item on the Virginia Tech campus and don't want to stress over oils and fats, check out the YES menu items. YES stands for You're Eating Smarter. All of these foods are less than 600 calories and contain heart-healthy fats. Let's put this all together. An easy way to design a great meal is to make a plate that looks like this. ChooseMyPlate.gov is the USDA's website that can help you explore healthy food choices, serving sizes, and provide resources to help you track your nutrition and fitness habits. Let's build some plates based on the MyPlate method. As you can see, it's simple to build a healthy meal using the MyPlate concept. Just make a quarter of your plate grains, a quarter of your plate protein, half your plate fruits and or vegetables, and include some dairy on your plate or on the side. The plate method is easy to replicate when foods are separated, but a lot of us eat combination foods. A combination food has several or all food groups mixed together. Let's look at some combination meals and see what's inside. Deconstructing combination meals is a bit trickier because you have to be able to guesstimate the serving sizes of each food group rather than seeing them neatly portioned out and separated on your plate. Our first combination meal is the Fantastic Frank Sandwich. Our second combination meal is a burrito. Our last combination meal is a stir-fry. Now that you have a better idea of how to build a great plate, start practicing. Once you understand the MyPlate visual, it's easy to estimate proper portion sizes at every meal. Don't forget to add lots of variety, choose foods high in vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, and low in fat to get the most out of each meal.